Sunday is that special time for us to get together and study the Word of God. We're so glad that you've joined us this morning for our presentation of Give Me the Bible. So go get your Bible, sit down, and let's study together from the pages of God's eternal Word right here on Give Me the Bible. You know, God has given us instruction in His Word. You know, I remember as a young boy, my mother always gave me instructions for life. <laughs> she would tell me, son, be sure and brush your teeth. Uh, be, be sure and be careful. Uh, don't talk to strangers. Be sure and put on clean underwear in case you're in an accident. Maybe all of us have heard those things. But you know what? When you read the Bible, you realize that maybe God's instructions for life is far different. And we're going to call on uh, Doyle Bruce right now uh, to help us realize that uh, one of the great things that God tells us in his word regarding life and living is to rely upon the word of God and understand that the Bible really is the word of God, isn't it, Doyle? And it absolutely is the word of God. As a child too, Dan, my parents taught me a lot of things. And I remember the many songs we would sing, whether it be the B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me or read your Bible and pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. One of our all-time favorite, though, is I love the Bible. I love the Bible. It is God's Word. With confidence, we can know that we hold within our very hands the Word of God as He's communicated to us His love for us and His will for us. And all the things that we would ever need to know, God has already settled it in heaven. Psalms chapter 119 is all about the Word of God. And we read in verse number 89, Forever, O Lord, your Word is settled in heaven. God's Word has been communicated to us. We can know His will as has been given to us. We read in 2 Peter chapter number 1, verses 2 and 3, as it describes the grace and peace being multiplied to us. Well, how can we have that grace and peace? The confidence that we know the Word has been shared with us. As we read in verse number 3, as His divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. We have, through God's Word, all that we need to know to be a godly people and to live for Him. We read in 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verses 16 and 17, as it describes God's Word. Verse number 16, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. All the Word of God that we hold within our hands, this Bible, is being given by God, by Him breathing it out, the pages, so we can see and to know God and His will for us and what He had for us. We see that it goes on to describe what it would be good for, as it describes, is profitable for doctrine, the teaching we need to know, for reproof, don't do that, for correction, you need to do this, for uh, instruction in righteousness, this is how you need to live to be right with God. Then verse 17, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Yes, I love the Bible. It is God's Word. And we can know without a doubt that we can find just exactly what He would have for us in our lives as we read these pages. Thank you, Dan. Doyle, thank you very much as well. And we want to move around along uh, right now. We're going to go to uh, Dennis Morris. And Dennis, um, I know that the Bible really is the Word of God. One thing that we fail to teach maybe sometimes and people fail to realize is that the Bible really isn't against us. I hear people say, well, the Bible's just uh, full of a bunch of thou shalt nots and just prohibitions and restrictions. But the Bible is not really against us. Isn't the Bible really for us? That's right, Dan, it is. We we'll go back to uh, 2 Timothy once again, and notice there in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15, when Paul said this about Timothy, he says, that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Notice that the Bible has been given to us for a reason. First, it is to bring us to Christ. It is for our benefit. It is for our salvation. And so when we want to know what we need to do to be saved, we go to the Word of God. We go to the New Testament, that testament that we're under today. Why? Because the Bible there is there and has been given unto us to help us. 
But also in connection with that, the Bible has been given unto us that it might guide us. Uh, we remember over in uh, Psalm 119 and verse 11, it says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. It's there to help us truly, but it is also there to guide us in the way that we should go. Uh, we just no made notice of verses 16 and 17, but we'll notice them once again. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Notice it is profitable, beneficial to us. Well, in what way? In doctrine, that is what we teach for reproof, for correction, for instruction. Where? In righteousness, to know how we are to live a life for God. And then over in the book of Psalms, once again, in Psalm 119 and verse 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. It is a light unto my path. It gives us the light that we need to guide our steps. And then also we find in verse 17 that the Bible is there to help us that we might be perfect, that is complete in all good works. He says that the man of God may be perfect, that is complete, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. This reminds me of a statement that was made in the book of Hebrews in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 21, wherein the Hebrew writer says, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. The word of God is God's will. And we need it in order that we might be able to follow what God would have us to do to be saved, what we need to do to live the Christian life and those good works that we're supposed to be involved in in this life so that we can make it to heaven. Brother Dan. Thank you, Dennis. You know, all of us at times lack wisdom. Uh, there are so many times we fail in life and we make mistakes because we're just not really wise people. And yet in the book of James 1:17 and following the Bible says that if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth to all men uh, who chideth not. And uh, I'm gonna call on Perry Cowan now to help us that in the word of God, uh, therein lies wisdom and, and understanding, doesn't it? And doesn't the Bible really teach that wisdom is far superlative to the wealth of the world or being prominent in this life, Perry? Yes, it is. And wisdom is found in the Word of God because it has come from God. We need to understand that uh, the way we get wisdom is to ask it of God, as, as Dan just mentioned from the book of James. Uh, we need to have the wisdom and the understanding of God, and, and wisdom actually is seeing things through God's eyes. Uh, in, in that sense, uh, uh, you know, that's descriptive of Jesus Christ from the time he was a child. If you look into the scripture at Luke chapter 2, verse 40 says, And the child, speaking of Jesus, grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him, filled with wisdom as he grew from a child to become a man. In Matthew chapter 13, uh, these words are recorded. Uh, when he came into his ministry, when Jesus grew to the point that he was ready to begin his earthly ministry, it said, and when he was coming to his own country, he taught them in their synagogues in as much as that they were astonished and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? They couldn't understand where he got all of this. Well, it, it comes from God. And that's the way that we receive wisdom, if we are to have any, is we get it from God. Wisdom comes from understanding the Bible. Uh, that's why we should pray for understanding. And, and certainly we should pray for wisdom, pray for understanding. Uh, that we might know what God has given us uh, through these, these uh, God-breathed words that we have. Uh, we, we study God's Word. Before we study, we should pray that we're going to understand uh, what God is telling us. Paul instructed Timothy in 2 Timothy, uh, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. To rightly divide it, means that we're going to have wisdom and we're going to have understanding of it. Otherwise, we will wrongly divide it and come up with the wrong conclusions. In James chapter 1, as uh, has been mentioned, James said, If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. So, as we study, as, as we pray, let us come to see and understand God's Word through God's eyes. That's His intention for us as we uh, 
study from his word. Paul was inspired to write, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Let us dwell in him. Let it live in us. Amen. Thank you, Barry. You know, God's greatest gift to us is the gift of his son, Jesus Christ. And I won't really say subsequent to it, but, but equal to it is the word of God that tells us about his son. It's God's gift to us. You know, every year parents give their children a multiplicity of things. And in today's technological world, we give them an iPad. Sometimes uh, people give their kids uh, cell phones, uh, you know, those kind of things. Or maybe the latest trinket uh, down at Walmart or wherever. And uh, shouldn't we be more impressed with the importance of giving the Bible to our children? And that's what we've been doing for 30 years, is just simply giving you the word of Jehovah God. I'm going to call on uh, Chris Groda now from over at Mount Pleasant, Texas, to help us understand that the Bible really is the gift of God to us, isn't it, Chris? It is. And Dan, you know, with all the spokesmen and all the penmen between the Old and New Testaments, the fact is that that the Bible writers understood that the author was ultimately God. It was His message being revealed to man through them. Uh, for instance, 430 times within the Scriptures it says, Thus saith the Lord. 1,078 times at least it says, The Lord said. At least 539, 539 times it'll say, And God said. That's very impressive to me. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, 2 Timothy 3.16. The Bible tells us the Old Testament was written for our admonition. It was written for our learning, 1 Corinthians 10.11, Romans 15, verse 4. But you know, I think that Lynn DeShazo's, or DeShazo's hymn, Ancient Words, really captures the essence of what we're trying to communicate to you to this day, and I'm going to read those lyrics to you. Holy words, long preserved for our walk in this world. They resound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Words of life, words of hope, give us strength, help us cope. In this world where e'er we roam, ancient words will guide us home. Holy words of our faith, handed down to this age, came to us through sacrifice. Oh, heed the faithful words of Christ. Holy words, long preserved for our walk in this world, they resound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. The refrain says, ancient words ever true, changing me, changing you. In this world where we have come with open hearts, oh, let the ancient words impart. My friends, that is the gift of God. Back to you, Dan. Thank you, Chris. Uh, we're grateful this morning for your comments and your thoughts. Uh, we want to move along right now, and we're going to go to uh, actually my friend over in Tyler, Neil Thurman. And uh, Neil, I know a lot of times in life people act as though they're ashamed of the Bible. Uh, they hide it maybe in their automobile, and if they walk into a place of business, they don't really worry so much about uh uh, carrying the Bible with them. Uh, sometimes we don't want people to see us with the Bible. Uh, but you know, Jesus said that we're not to be ashamed of him and his word. Isn't that right? You know, we first think about how we might present it in our lives. As Perry just mentioned to us about pl applying it, the word of God to our lives so that we can see they're echoing those words of Paul uh, writing to Timothy, telling us to be diligent or to study, showing ourselves approved. Well, how are we going to be approved? By living the Word of God, by rightly dividing it and applying it to our lives so that we can show it to others with our lives first. It's so much more powerful if we, when we seek to teach the Word, if we are living it. But Paul himself said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for all who believes. The, Paul says, I'm not going to shun it. I'm not going to hold it back. I'm going to be proud of the word of God. I'm not going to be ashamed of it. Why? Because it saves people. Because it has power. And he even pleads with Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1, 
In verse 8, when he says, Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of the Lord or of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the suffering for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Dan, we need to be living in such a way that we hold the gospel forward. We don't want to hide our Bibles as we carry it around. We want to open it up and share it with people. We want to open it up and turn it toward them and allow them to read from it. We want to allow ourselves to be a biblical lesson every day with everyone that comes about. I had a great story, a young man that worships with us in our congregation we were visiting together about uh, something that was going on in his life. And I asked him uh, why he didn't talk to his dad, who's a dear friend of mine. Uh, why didn't he ask his dad about it? And he said, well, you have to understand, Mr. Neal, every time you talk with my dad, whatever it is, you always end up at Jesus. Wherever you begin, you always end up talking about Jesus. And I thought, what a great testament to his father that whether you're talking about a thing that's happening at school, in a relationship with friends or in the family, you always end up talking about Jesus. I would say that my dear friend is not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. We ask you this morning, are you ashamed of the gospel? Are you proud to hold up the word of God and say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God? Back to you, Dan. Neil, we're grateful to you this morning for those timely thoughts and comments, and I, I know that our audience appreciates them very much as well. You know, when you think about your life, uh, and really we often do, uh, everything really ends up at the throne of God, doesn't it? It really does. And you and I will end up at the throne of God someday. And confronting us of all things will be the Bible itself. How do we know that? I'm going to call on uh, Chris Vidakovich from Kilgore to help us understand why that's true. We first of all really have to believe that the Bible is the Word of God, that it's the way to heaven. Now, suppose I decided I wanted to take a trip. I'd like to go to Chicago. I've tried a couple of times to head that way. Never can make it. And I want to see the St. Louis Cardinals play the, the Chicago Cubs and the Cardinals win, but that's another point. But all I'm going to do is I'm just going to get in my car. I'm, I'm not going to ask anybody. I'm not going to take a map. I'm not going to reassign. I'm just going to get in my car, and I'm just going to go to Chicago, and I want to wind up there. Well, there's a better chance that I'm going to wind up in, in Gravelburg, Saskatchewan, or the North Pole than I am Chicago. I have a friend in Gravelburg, so I can go visit him. But there's no way I'm going to get there without at least looking for a sign. And the Bible tells us how to stand before God in judgment. It tells us exactly what we need to do, but it's the only source to tell us what to do. We're not going to learn it from anywhere else, and so we have to open up the book. We have to read the Word of God. We have to find out what God says. So, have you read the instructions? Jesus says in John chapter 12, verse 47 and 48, As for the person who hears my words but does not keep them, I do not judge him. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save it. There is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. That very word which I spoke will condemn him on the last day. So when we stand before God and, and the day of judgment, it's going to be, have we read the word to find out what we needed to do so that we will not be condemned, but also so we can find out what not to do because those things will condemn us. But have we obeyed Jesus? Have we obeyed the word? Have we been baptized into the death, burial, and resurrection? Have we lived a life faithful to him? Those things are the things that the word tells us to do and that we need to do. Another great verse is in Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through 13, where it says, Then I saw the great white throne and him who was seated on it. Earth and sky fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and the books were open. Another book was open, which was the book of life, and the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in them, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them, and each person was judged according to what he had done. Well, guess what the standard is as to what you have done that is right and wrong? It's the Word of God. It's the Bible. And God has given that to you. And don't expect to wind up in heaven and stand before God 
justified if you have not read the book. Dan? Thank you, Chris. You know, we all learn from one another on this telecast. One thing I've learned this morning is that I would not want to go with our brother to uh, St. Louis, Missouri to see the Cardinals play. I, uh, we might end up somewhere in Saskatchewan, and uh, I don't have a desire to go to Canada. But uh, anyway, one thing we know for sure is that we know where we're going when we leave this life, and we can know it most assuredly according to the will of God. And uh, I'm going to call on Joe Hancock now here in closing. And Joe, I think one of the greatest gifts of God is heaven, no doubt. Uh, but if we miss heaven, haven't we missed the greatest blessing of all? Well, Dan, we have. And, you know, the Bible tells us that our goal should be to make it to God in heaven uh, through the judgment, uh, being the Christians that we should be, following the commands as he's given to us in his word. Uh, the men have done a great deal this morning of, of discussing the word and, and why we have it and, and what it does for us. The end result is heaven, as the Bible explains it. If you have your Bibles this morning, you can turn to the book of Revelation in chapters 21 and 22. They give us a, a somewhat of a physical look at the beauty of heaven. You know, John, through his vision and through his pen, recorded some things for us that he saw uh, in the Spirit as he was taken up by the angel. And he writes in chapters 21 and 22, at different verses, uh, 21 verse 2, Then I, I, John, saw the holy city Jerusalem, or the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. In verse 4, And God will wipe away every tear from their eye. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. In verse 7, uh, He who overcomes shall inherit all things. The Bible tells us what it means to overcome and how to do that. John says, He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. John writes in verse 8, But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. John begins also in, the, in the chapter 22 to speak to us about the river of life that he saw in his vision. He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb in the middle of its uh, street and the, on either side of the river was a tree of life which bore 12 fruits each year, tree yielding its fruit every month the leaves of the tree were for healing of the nations John gives us this physical description because in our mortality and our human condition we can't understand exactly what heaven looks like we've never seen it John gives this to us because he tells us of the beauty of it in words and, and descriptions we can understand in a physical sense Dan, if we miss heaven, we've missed the greatest gift, the greatest blessing that God has ever prepared for his faithful children. And we need to do everything we can to share the word of God as we've talked about this morning and to get as many people to understand that heaven needs to be their goal as well. You know, the Bible is still the bestseller of all the books in the world. Isn't that amazing? It is still uh, the bestseller of any publication that has ever made its way uh, to uh, the publishers. And I'm thankful today that you and I have copies of the Bible. But you know what? It's not enough just to tote a Bible around. It's not enough just to have one in our hands or perhaps one maybe on the bookshelf at home or in your automobile. But we should open that word and read from it. Jesus, in the book of John 5, 39, said to search the Scriptures. And you know what? That's still a valid teaching of Jesus Christ. Search the Scriptures. You know why we should search them? It's because the Bible says that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable. Listen to that, profitable. It is profitable in every way. And uh, let me ask you a question this morning. I know it's kind of uh, pointed, a little pointed, but still true. Uh, when was the last time you picked up your Bible and actually read from its pages? Now, sometimes people say, well, I only read the Bible when I'm in trouble or I only read the Bible when I have difficulty or when something's wrong in my life. You know what? You should read the Word of God to prevent all of that. Uh, David said it was good that I was afflicted that I might learn your statutes. You'll learn through the problems and the difficulties of this life. And we know that in this life we will have them. For Job 14, 1 and 2 said that man that's born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. Isn't that amazing? Well, what a great prophecy. 
that we're going to have problems. But, you know, one of the ways that we prohibit many of those problems, and too often we're our own worst enemy, is the fact that we haven't picked up the Word of God to read what God actually says. Maybe this morning you need to do that. I think my panelists here this morning would encourage you, as I'm doing even now, to, to get your Bible out and read it. And we always do that every time we have Give Me the Bible. We always encourage you to get your Bible and read along with us. Know that what we're telling you is not just something that we conjured up, but actually it is from the Bible itself. It is documented, and that makes it extremely, extremely important. I want to tell you uh, about a DVD that we have available. It is free upon request. It's simply called the Searching the Scriptures, and it just takes you on an adventure through the Word of God. And we're happy to send that to you free of charge. You can keep it from now on, but after you've used it, you might want to share it with a friend uh, to help lead them on a closer walk with God. Uh, and, and if you call us at that 800 number, uh, we'll be happy to send you a biblical tract entitled The Churches of Christ. Who are these people? Don't believe all the fake news out there that you hear about the Church of Christ. Uh, don't subscribe to that. But just simply believe what we tell you because what we're telling you comes from the Word of God. And we challenge you to check that out, to verify it from God's Word, not just accept uh, what we believe. Uh, we'll also be happy to send you some other publications, maybe a Bible correspondence course that would lead you in a closer walk with God. We're happy to do that. And listen, folks, all of that is free. We're not asking you to send money, and as many televangelists say, to send your money, plant a seed in our ministry. We're not asking you to do that. Plant a seed in heaven. But just simply write to us. We'll make sure that it is free upon request. We'll get it to you. I can make you that promise. And I'm Dan Manuel, your host this morning, along with all of our panelists saying join us next week for another presentation of Give Me the Bible. Sing that old sweet song. Sing, sing.